Welcome to the Ask Sequel Family Podcast. This is episode number 20. And our guest today is Pavel Potashinsky. Chief Technology Officer at Clouds on Mars, former Microsoft employee as Data Insights Product Manager for Poland. In 2007, Paweł started Polish SQL Server User Group, currently known as Data Community Poland, an official past chapter in Poland. Paweł has been a speaker at many conferences in Poland and worldwide, SQL Day, SQL Saturday, European Pass Conference, six times Microsoft Data Platform MVP, avid runner, father of three. Hi Paweł. Hello guys. Thank Hello. you for accepting uh, invitation for this podcast. The pleasure is mine. At the beginning, uh, could you tell us uh, what is your name, full name, and where do you live? Okay, so my name is Paweł Potoszyński. I live in Warsaw, in Poland, for all my life. <laughs> cool. <laughs> what are you doing for a living? I work as a CTO at Clouds on Mars company. It's a small, you can call it startup. Uh, we are partners of Microsoft focused mainly on Polish market, but I would say spreading more uh, over Europe and uh, also having some some of the businesses in US. Which part of Europe you are focusing as well? Um, usually it's uh, it usually those are well 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 I would say positioned countries like Switzerland, uh, Netherlands. Mm-hmm. What kind of position do you have there? Uh, so uh, my job is uh, to keep an eye on uh, technologies. So to, to mm, let's say, um, drive directions for the whole company in which in which technologies we should uh, we should create our solutions and our products. We are, we're not mm-hmm. just focused on on solutions. We try to figure out some products uh, mainly related to analytics uh, BI AI stuff is, is what we are doing and I have uh, five people team they are called SPETS team uh-huh. you can call it something like uh, like uh, special forces in the company and uh, all, all those guys are architects uh, with uh, different skills so I have big data so big data guy I have an uh, analytics guy, the guys that uh, are skilled with um, SQL, uh, data warehousing and stuff like this, yeah. Are you focusing only on Microsoft yes. solutions? Yes, pure, hand, pure 100% Microsoft uh, partner and we are uh, currently we are not, we are not uh, heading towards any different vendor. Mm-hmm. Um, you have been working for Microsoft for several years, yeah? Tell me more about your experiences okay. from that period of time. That was a good time, actually. Uh, I started in uh, in uh, 2012, I guess, and uh, I worked there for uh, four and a half year. So my first role was uh, something called uh, Partner Technology Advisor. Uh, this role doesn't exist anymore. It, it's, it's now called Partner Technology Strategist, I guess. Uh, by by that time, uh, the role, the, the job uh, responsibilities were uh, to take care about the partners, recruit partners, uh, to work on the specific Microsoft technologies. My job, as you may imagine, was to capture uh, different partners to work with SQL to believe that SQL Server is uh, the best the best uh, database platform in the world, right? Mm-hmm. And then I moved uh, after three years. I moved to the uh, well, <laughs> marketing role. <laughs> it was uh, it was product manager on SQL Server as well, and then it uh, it was called uh, data data platform uh, product manager. Uh, so then my my responsibilities was to was where to um, drive strategy on the Polish market, how to position uh, Azure and SQL Server and Power BI uh, among different uh, competitive technologies. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying it was bad. It was a bad uh, moment in my life. It was definitely inspiring, and I, 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 I've learned a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I just decided that it's time to move forward uh, because I, because I, I really enjoy being close to technology. And uh, believe me, uh, in Microsoft, if, if you're not uh, a consultant, 
uh, in terms of being a PFP, FE or engineer, mm -hmm. uh, or you don't, you don't work uh, in Redmond, then there is a good chance you're you're beginning uh, to you're, you're just beginning to become more and more sales sales guy. So I just didn't want to and losing that touch profile. with technology. Yes, yeah? yes. Mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. getting rusty. Let's move a few years back. And how did you start working with SQL Server? I was doing my studies. There is a guy, uh, his name is Włodzimierz Dąbrowski, you may remember this name. Um, he's, a, he's a PhD at uh, Warsaw University of Technology. Um, so, uh, yeah, he, he, started, he started my journey with SQL Server. It was uh, with SQL Server 7.0. Um, I did my master thesis. It was it was somehow related to to SQL Server. I analyzed several web-based technologies, how they work and cooperate with SQL Server. That was my beginning, and then uh, I had a job uh, which uh, par with partially was uh, related to a, a database administration. Uh, it was not just SQL Server, but also some uh, PostgreSQL databases. But that's how it started. So I was a First, at first, I was a, I was a DBA, you can say. Then I moved to uh, T-SQL developer and trainer, and finally I, I landed in the BI land. So, so I started to deliver data warehousing and BI, and probably uh, I, somehow people are uh, connecting me to this. But I really have more 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 to do about T-SQL than uh, MDX and DAX. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> looks like very long journey and yeah. also very interesting. Uh, you are the founder of Polish SQL Server User Group, and you've been president of that organization. Yes. Which Could current you, name is uh, uh, Data Community Poland. Exactly. Yes. Uh, can you tell a few words about that organization? What was the driving force for setting it up? Yeah. So the the, the I, f I think the, that uh, the roots of this organization, this is organization right now, the for formal formal association, and uh, originally it was not uh, like that. It was a group of people just meeting and talking about SQL Server, purely purely colleagues, friends. So uh, we didn't want to uh, make it uh, formal, actually, but uh, uh, we observed that uh, this time when we uh, when we meet each other and then talk to uh, talk to each other about SQL Server, share our uh, observations, practices, uh, maybe some codings, uh, is a well well spent time. It was a good investment. So uh, there were a couple of people that uh, that uh, over time. Be became familiar like uh, Maciej Pilecki he was already well known well known and uh, famous speaker uh, Marek Adamczuk uh, Radek Kempa you, you may know th those guys uh, because they somehow became uh, experts uh, well well recognized experts in Poland and sometimes uh, sometimes uh, over the world like Mar Marcin Szolika for example so we just uh, figured out that it would it could be a good idea to uh, make those uh, meetings more official and maybe bring some more people on board uh, because uh, as we as we um, uh, spread it uh, spread it uh, among different companies we observed that there are lots of uh, i would say uh, smart people working hard with T-SQL and SQL server knowing some details that may be just uh, forgotten and even not uh, not observed by other guys uh, so the purpose of uh, Polish SQL server user group was to bring those guys and share their knowledge actually yes uh, you're presenting around the world, and I would like to ask about the uh, child of the Polish SQL Server as a group, so SQL Day Conference. Uh, yeah. How it looks like comparing to the other international uh, events? I would say it's, it's, uh, it looks very, 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 very good. Um, uh, of, co of course, uh, we, at, at the beginning we, we had to ins we had to be inspired by by bigger bigger conferences like, uh, for example, SQL Beats in UK. Definitely our one of our inspirations. Uh, but over time, I think SQL Day uh, SQL Day became something that is uh, a very 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 fam very famous uh, brand uh, across the, the Europe and probably probably over the world. And by by um, uh, by inviting guys from Redmond, from US, uh, I think you guys are doing 
good job in spreading the word. Uh, I think we, uh, we as, a, as, a, as an association are uh, recognized also, uh, also anywhere, we, you, anywhere you go and ask about SQL Server and Microsoft Data Platform in general. So, yeah, good job. Yeah, also the SQL Day uh, event is very recognizable, not only in Poland. Yes. Uh, the last yes. year, the tickets have been sold out uh, two months before conference started, I far, as yeah. far as I remember. De- definitely what, what, what people like about SQL Day is the, uh, is the community that uh, somehow, somehow um, uh, happened here, it was created three years. And our, probably our Polish hospitality is also what is recognized uh, because uh, is. We, are, we, are, we are really nice people for for the speakers, for the attendees uh, from different countries, so yes. Mm -hmm. And you also speaking a lot, uh, not only in Poland, but also on different other different conferences? Well, now, now it's it's not like that. Uh, you're, you're, you have some uh, some inactual data. Uh, I'm I'm not not anymore uh, traveling around the world. I just focus on uh, rather on Polish conferences uh, locally. But it's just because uh, I'm a family man, so it's, it just takes takes time to travel. Uh, and right now, uh, after having the third baby, I'm just uh, I'm just a bit more. Uh, domestic guy. <laughs> so you may you may meet me here in, uh, at SQL Saturday, at SQL Day, definitely in Poland. Uh, I consider going to some some neighborhood uh, countries, uh, maybe Czech, Czech Republic or, or Slovakia, maybe Germany. But uh, mm-hmm. it's not that time. I, I have to wait uh, uh, wait a while for my my young, youngest kid, kid kid to rise. So yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, because we didn't mention basically at the beginning <laughs> that we are sitting right now and uh, secure Saturday okay. uh, in yeah. Krakow. Yeah, and basically after this interview, we are go- you are going presenting the session. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, uh, okay, so the next question is in this place, how are you preparing yourself for a speech? Well, actually, over time it became uh, a bit easier. Uh, three years I learned that uh, it's not, it's not um, the most important thing about your session is how clear you are in your, uh, in your speech. It's 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 about uh, setting some goals just at the at the very beginning. So let's so start with why are you presenting this session? Then uh, bring some facts to the table. Uh, never rely on documentation or <laughs> things that were created by somebody else, uh, which probably you 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 haven't tested any uh, in any 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 serious project. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, if you have if you have uh, real real world stuff to show, it's it's definitely easier to to bring something to the to the attendees. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, uh, right now I'm a, I became a bit lazy because uh, usually I have a co-speaker, which makes things uh, double easier. Uh, so uh, each time we just uh, we just uh, spread the work uh, uh, between two people. Uh, so this t- th- at this moment uh, I have a session with my my uh, friend from from Clouds on Mars, Pavel Kuczkowski, a big data architect at my team. So mm-hmm. uh, he just uh, he's responsible for some. For some of the demos uh, in our in our today presentation right uh, you have mentioned you have mentioned that you are father of three kids and yeah. also i know that you are avid runner yeah. uh, how do you prioritize those things together yeah, so that uh, that's 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 a very dif- difficult question. Uh, definitely, ver- the very first number one is family. That's why I I, I rarely have time to well be a part of, uh, of any any races or or, or, uh, or, or attend attend some some foreign foreign uh, conferences. So yeah, that that change with the third kid. Um, yeah, the family is first. Running is definitely the last one. Uh, so uh, I think uh, work and community is still the n- number two, and running is something that is just that is just present present in my life because I just uh, found out years ago that uh, it may save my life actually because uh, you know if you, if you're getting heavier and heavier, there's nothing good about your health. So so. I really encourage people to start doing something uh, to become healthy. Definitely, change, can change your life. 
you may feel better. Yeah. So how this work-life balance uh, works for you? Is that work? So you are it, does, it doesn't work. <laughs> there is some, there is there is always some area that suffers from others. So uh-huh. now. Uh, When I have an uh, intense time uh, at home and at work, uh, running suffers a lot. Mm-hmm. So uh, let me give you an example by numbers. Yeah, SQL guys, uh, we love numbers. Uh, in 2015, uh, I've run uh, three and a half thousand kilometers per year, so which mm-hmm. makes me like uh, 10 kilometers a day. Right now, I'm running like uh, maybe a thousand and a half a year. Which is over twice, twice less than, than two years ago, four years ago, right? So still very good, I think. Yeah, I know, I know. That's uh, for for people not running. It seems a lot, but it it means that you run three times a week, ten kilometers, ten kilometers uh, each run, right? So it's it's not that bad, but uh, definitely less than than in my history. True, I was I was running, maybe not as much yeah. as you, but still, you, you look like me. you look like you were running, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, okay, some of your activities are on your technical blog basically yeah. and how do you find time inspiration for the posts actually you asked me you, you asked me the killing question because my blog <laughs> is dead for some time I promised myself to start start over and, and keep, keep on blogging but it's so difficult especially that um, some of the activities uh, planned by myself uh, always are around my work so uh, I, I, I think I I, I may I may I may be visible rather on some blog or v blog of my company uh, in the next in the next couple of months than uh, on my own blog. So sorry, but uh, yeah, this blog is more the memory than <laughs> some something that is actual, right? If you, you can find some historical uh, entries like uh, things about things around uh, historical versions of SQL Server. <laughs> Yeah, but I, um, fingers crossed for your uh, yeah. New Year resolution. Yeah, basically. that's that's the resolution. <laughs> Definitely, that's the resolution. Yeah. Uh, you've been working for Microsoft, and you've been also awarded by MVP Award. Uh, what do you think about MVP program those days? I think it's unique, and actually, uh, I think we are fortunate to be MVPs on data platform or AI because some of the guys here are, are also AI MVPs. And uh, the, the reason why we are fortunate is that because the product groups uh, that are around, that are built around uh, data platform of Microsoft are seems to be unique. I mean, the the contact, the intensity of the contact with those product groups uh, while I'm and I'm the MVP is very unique. I mean, I can ask practically every single question and I'm answered, uh, let's say, in a few hours, usually. So uh, the contact with other MVPs, the contact with product groups is something that is, uh, that, is that brings the most value to this, to this program, the network built uh, around the world, definitely. It will be out of networking and uh, during the, in the March. You know? Yeah, yeah. MVP summit. Definitely, I'm going there. Yes. Me definitely, too. <laughs> definitely, yes. What is the personal achievement that you are most proud of? Uh, losing 30 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and also convincing my wife to have the next child uh, after over 10 years of break. Yeah. You're talking about the third one. Yeah, the third okay. one is the third one has now. I was actually not not over 10 years. The third one is two and a half, while my sons are 14 and 11. So that makes a huge difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's tough to be to be a newly newly born parent again because it seems like it's the first one, right? It's the mm-hmm. first girl we have. So yeah, that's something different. Yeah, that was the challenge. Yeah. I can imagine. You say, you have to remember everything uh, that you that you've done in in the past. So yeah, yeah. I already forgot about all those things at yeah. the <laughs> from the beginning. Definitely, but it's it's definitely worth worth that. Yeah, and about the kilos, you lost those kilograms many years ago. I think. Yes, yeah? yes, I started running in 2012, I guess. Uh, maybe because of my, I started, I started my my job at Microsoft there, <laughs> so I decided to, I, I decided to to uh, at least at least lose some kilos uh, 
because because I was uh, definitely I was, that was that was stressful moment for mm-hmm. me. I just stepped into a, an international international company with different um, culture, uh, definitely dif- different uh, different I would say uh, speed of work. Yeah, that was something that came to my mind so I decided to do something for me for myself mm-hmm. and I was running and definitely I, 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 don't, I don't regret that uh, it was a good time and I continue that with, cool. with maybe not, not uh, as many successes in terms of beating my personal records but yeah still running mm-hmm. and which part of your work is the, the hardest one as to be being a CTO definitely it's people management You may imagine uh, how it is, uh, how, how hard it is uh, if you have five uh, or maybe more uh, employees uh, to manage. Uh, each one uh, is a senior guy, each one with different skills. And it's uh, probably the, 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 the biggest challenge is to switch from the, uh, the answerer, as I call myself, And I usually was the guy who answered all the, all the questions. Now I have to uh, bring the answers from all those guys to all the people that needs answers to our technical mm-hmm. questions. So uh, I'm not the as I, I I usually I usually when I when I talk to my to my team I usually say guys my success is to make you smarter than me. If 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 we prove to our to our uh, colleagues at that company and our uh, and our clients that you are smarter than me then we're done then the job is done yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we're in this in this situation in this well, actually I, I, well, I observe I observe uh, how those pe- how those people are uh, working every day and I think they get more and more convinced that uh, there are some areas that I just didn't cover uh, because it, there's no time to follow all the technologies mm-hmm. especially now when, when you have not just SQL Server the single, a single version uh, but you have Azure with uh, how hundreds hundreds of services and uh, open source world coming in so yeah we just we just divide all those te- all those technologies uh, among many people that's that makes things easier definitely mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what hints would you would you give to young people who want to start working in IT markets uh build your network definitely so the sql saturday sql day uh, the conferences that uh, that fit your interests are definitely something you should attend no matter what uh, meet people talk to people there are lots of open people who will advise you who will talk to you about uh, on technology you, you don't have to be an expert uh, you should pick one or two technologies which uh, you should Uh, you should stick to and be an expert. Uh, try to dis- make this decision wisely because uh, you may see that some of the technologies uh, de-evaluate quickly. Mm-hmm. So that's crucial decision for you. But also do not close yourself for different technologies. And I'm mm-hmm. not just saying about Microsoft. Mm-hmm. If you get familiar with different technologies from different vendors you're one step ahead because you know that your clients may be not that uh, fascinated about Microsoft World because they've seen something different right mm-hmm. and then we are going to smoothly to the next question so Microsoft did very well uh, to in, in Azure Secure Data Warehouse uh, comparing to its competitors um, in this area So either from performance perspective uh, as well as from financial cost perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, have you had a chance to work with the other products uh, in this area by like comparing, comparing them, comparing between them? Well, actually, uh, as I moved to, towards uh, towards uh, analytics and, and data warehousing, I rather I rather played with uh, different uh, big data engines, pass big data ven- engines. So I had some uh, some uh, benchmarks uh, against uh, Redshift and uh, Google BigQuery. Mm-hmm. So that was not actually pure one hundred relational engines. Um, and uh, about what you're saying uh, on, on SQL database, actually, if you look at uh, SQL database from uh, SQL Server, I mean perspective on SQL Server developer perspective, uh, 
Yeah, that, there is something uh, that is really, really um, meaningful. I mean, those databases uh, are used uh, used around the world, but still, I think uh, there are some little and bigger things that can be uh, can be uh, can change in Microsoft offering. And what I what I mean is what I mean by that is, for example. Uh, we we've seen uh, we've seen moving from DTUs to vCores last time, right? Mm -hmm. Mo most of uh, the new the, well, most of the newest uh, versions of SQL database, I mean managed instances, hyperscale and stuff like this, they rely on vCore. However, if you re if you compare how vCore relates to memory, then you're not so happy. I don't find it, it very very um, I would say. A, Attractive offer to have one vCore corresponding to five and a half gigs of RAM, right? Okay. So there is still there is still a lot to do, but uh, but yes, it, it's Jeff is definitely a good direction that uh, the well known and really great SQL Server engine is moved to the past uh, past services. And if I compare uh, what I've what I what I've seen about the big data and warehousing tools. Uh, Microsoft definitely did a good job uh, also by providing well-known well -known interfaces like T-SQL language everywhere they, they can. If you observe the, the, uh, new, the newest uh, announcement, yesterday they announced the general availability of uh, Data Explorer in Azure. Mm -hmm. It's custo, right? So uh, it's also uh, based on the assumption that you may bring some T-SQL skills, write some T-SQL queries, and then operate on really big data stuff doing things in a matter of sub-seconds, right? So, very cool stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for the orchestration processes, what do you use in, in, in the well, company? Actually, we stick to, to SQL Server integration services, eventually moving towards uh, Azure Data Factory with some of the use cases uh, addressed by Databricks. Mm -hmm. We look forward to uh, data factory uh, data flows and, and matching data flows, uh, but for now, yes, SQL Server integration services, mostly because we used to we get used to all the goodies like BIM stuff and mm -hmm. yeah, so mm -hmm. so we still are on that. Uh, however, we what we see uh, nowadays is that. Uh, because of uh, the slow start of, I'm sorry, sorry to say that, but slow start of data factory, some of the, some of some of our clients are using, uh, for example, Airflow mm -hmm. to operate uh, ETL processes and, and mm -hmm. the data data orchestration, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, you are working with a lot of cloud products, as you have mentioned, like yeah. the uh, Azure Data Warehouse, Azure Data Warehouse. And from your experience, how many customers are ready to migrate to? Azure from on-premises to, to cloud. Actually, uh, I would say it's v it's easier, definitely easier to start uh, new businesses and new 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 projects than migrate. Migration is always a pain because uh, there's lots of legacy in in Polish companies. You may find definitely lots of legacy uh, systems which are hard to migrate because of uh, I'm not sure. Many things, uh, logic, logic spread it among databases, uh, different, uh, different old technologies. Um, there are lots of there are lots of factors actually. So it's 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 usually a, a big project to migrate something, and you may not satisfy it, but by by the arguments uh, just of of you know, having pure cloud. But if you're going to start a new project. The, the the pace the the fast start of of the cloud and uh, the fact that you may operate uh, with the cost uh, this is just a, another part of your optimization uh, is uh, really something that really really, really it, people people are, are just designing more and more to get into the get into the cloud right. Yeah, so do you observe that more companies yes, are definitely. going to migrate? I mean, yeah, it's absolutely easier to start with yeah. new products, so, new, so new solution in the cloud. Actually, Cloud on Mars is the first company that, uh, working for this company, I have an impression that I have more cloud clients than, than the on-prem clients. So mm -hmm. definitely we have like 70% of cloud, uh, cloud deployments uh, over the rest being on-prem. But if, even if, if uh, our client, client uh, deploys on-prem, it's always uh, a matter of discussion and maybe providing some additional arguments uh, uh, to make them consider cloud as the next step. So, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. it's well, changing. Mm -hmm. 
I remember, I remember, sorry, sorry. I remember uh, like uh, SQL day three or four years ago where we were sitting there at the discussion panel and Adam Makanik was mentioning that he, he has some, uh, f- some Fortune 100 clients and uh, none of them is moving to the cloud. I, I, I think Adam should, uh, should, should uh, visit us now and let's, let's revisit this question because it may change over time, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, I had the same impression uh, mm-hmm. over over that time, right? So it's just a couple of uh, the last years that uh, the, the the cloud explosion. Yeah, it changed a lot. Happened. Yeah, it mm-hmm. happened. Mm-hmm. As you have a lot of experience with the cloud, what do you think about the cloud first, cloud only approach that is starts to be some buzzword? Well, actually, it's, it's, it is a buzzword because uh, more and more clients um, uh, are asking about uh, how do you address uh, vendor lock problem, right? So uh, I think uh, in the nearest future, we may observe trends like um, uh, companies uh, focused on data platforms will have to bring bring on board people uh, f- people that are specialized in uh, administration of infrastructure and by, by infrastructure i mean infrastructure as a code so pure uh, pure templates um, some uh, content container stuff uh, things like that because not, not not everybody will rely on pass services pass services it, it just uh, People, people uh, think are thinking about past services as okay. So uh, this this project, if I step into this this service, there there will be a problem when I if I decide to get back to to let's say migrate to a different cloud vendor, for example. Mm-hmm. So that's always that's always a question. What do you think about the current trend of migration to cloud? Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, is it going to replace all the secure server on premise in the future, or no? No, I, I think uh, SQL Server still has many, many different, uh, different unique offerings. Like, for example, um, master data services, or, or for example, the new, the newly created with uh, 2019 uh, big data clusters, right? Mm-hmm. So, so it's it's not like it's going to finish, but it's going to be more hybrid. So we, I think we observe, we'll observe, uh, let's say kind of stronger connect, connection between uh, the on-prem world and, and the cloud uh, just to make the migration easier of course yeah. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how do you da- how do you adopt the devops approach in your company oh it's hard in, in actually it's uh, I, i could point you to many many feedback items at um, at uh, microsoft azure forums uh, but uh, yeah we, we try to do that actually Uh, we see that there is a good direction because uh, practically every single uh, every single team at uh, Microsoft Product Groups uh, s- sees that there is a problem if if we are going to perform DevOps and uh, CI CD, then without the appropriate tools, we're just lost. Uh, I'm referring here to, for example, project templates for data warehouse, which are still missing. They're uh-huh. in preview. We are testing it. We uh-huh. are providing feedback, but it's not it's not uh, the adult product, right? So uh-huh. we need that. We need that. We need also uh, maybe some additional tools for uh, lightweight clients like uh, Azure Data Studio uh, to make things more efficient to work as with developers. Uh-huh. I, I really, I really. Uh, invite people working with pure .NET application because they have all everything in place. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we with databases, if you develop SQL database, yeah, you're, you're covered because you mm-hmm. have uh, you have a very very good pro- product in database project template. SSDT is not SSDT perfect. SSDT but... is not perfect, but uh, yeah, we try to cover every single missing feature with uh, with third parties. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think the the biggest problem now is to make uh, CI/CD uh, and DevOps with Power BI. <laughs> it's a yes, different topic. It's, yeah, it's a different topic. We are not covering this yeah. topic right yeah. now. But I yes. think I think they are heading in the right direction. Uh, but uh, mm-hmm. still, the major things are missing there. 
yeah, I think this is low low prioritized for Microsoft right now. Uh, this may be on this I, stage, I think it's on high priority, they, yeah, but they, it's but it's difficult because of the uh, because of the the fact how Power BI was implemented mm -hmm. uh, at first, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's I think it's a kind of technological debt mm -hmm. to be paid right now. Where we can find you? Um, you have mentioned about the blog. Yeah, I, I'm actually I present uh, usually on uh, on Facebook uh, Facebook discussion group uh, of Data Community Poland, so you may find me there. From time to time, I'm tweeting. Mm -hmm. It's just. I, I, if I, as I remember well, Pavel dot It's that's something. That's, that's something. We we'll uh, put the link. Uh, the yeah, <laughs> probably. The, the uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, and uh, I also, I also, from time to time, I'm present at uh, Azure communities, not just data community meetings. Uh, so you may also find me there. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I, as I mentioned, I'm rather busy domestic family guy uh, at the moment, and also with my new role at the company, uh, there's no money there is not much time for me to to perform some activities so mm -hmm. i'm just trying to focus on the most important stuff like sql saturday sql day yeah that's why i'm here perfect thanks thanks yeah. a lot thank you for joining us listening to this podcast and time spent jointly you can find this podcast on the website sqlplayer.net share this episode if you like it and let us know if you want to hear a specific person from the sql community or maybe about an interesting topic of technology.